What's up, folks? My name's Justin Kana, and for today's special edition Friday show that doesn't really have a general theme yet, we are gonna talk about what I use in my knife roll when I'm going out for a trail or a stage or a restaurant interview. Now, these aren't always the most important things, but these items are great if you either are looking to upgrade what you're currently working with or if you have a stage coming up. I bet you're using some of this stuff already, but maybe I give you some alternatives and most of all, explain why. Welcome back to the channel, great to have you here. Like I said, we're going to go over my mobile setup, the setup of gear that I will take to a trail or a stage. This is that one day you get to spend in a kitchen shooting for a new position. Now to give a little bit of context, this kit will change once I'm more in the day to day to day operations of having that job. But for today, we're just gonna go over some basics and I'll explain how and why I built this kit out. I always get so excited when I talk about this stuff. I have this, here, one second. I have this notebook here. This is like a really creaky old, like you can hear the pages creaking open. Moleskin book, I have a bunch of diagrams inside the notebook. Like I have this one here. This is a little diagram of WD-50 from back in the day. They would tape down the markers on the pass so that you could kind of like slide the pen into the thing and then pull it out so it was a one-handed operation. Pretty cool, right? I have tons of diagrams like that in this book. So I would always pay super, super close attention to how people were doing the things that they were doing and how that made them faster or more efficient or make service go more smoothly. I also love looking at other chef's tools, not just to see if they have something that I want to make my life easier, but also because a lot of times the pieces and items that people work with on a day-to-day -day basis have really unique stories behind them. And by hearing those stories, you get to know a little bit more about the person that you're working with. And I'm a firm believer that if you get to know the person working next to you better, you two will work better together better. All right, that's enough chat. Let's get into it. I'm currently rocking this bad boy. This is the Boldrick one buckle knife roll. It's pretty basic, like super basic. It holds eight knives comfortably if you want it just for that, but I like it because you don't have to be precious with it. I think that brown leather ages really well. There's no handle or strap for a reason. I had a bad experience once when I was on a stage with a friend of mine in New York City. He had one of those like shoulder strap ones and it came undone accidentally and all of his knives spilled all over 56th Street. It was it was not fun. I stashed this guy in a messenger style bag with some other essentials, but we'll get more into that later. Let's fill this up with goodies first. And to do that, we need to consult the toolbox. Ugh. This is the toolbox. So this has drawers on drawers of organized essentials. So like I've got spoons in that one and other tools in that one. I can open up the top, Close that back up. I'm just gonna set this down. Right there. First up, this is a knife roll video, so let's start with knives, shall we? Tiny little guy here I've got is the Victoria Knox Petty with a red handle. You might start to see a theme in this video. I Red's my favorite. But the reason I like this for stages is they're cheap and disposable. They come pretty sharp right off the shelf. You can put an edge on them if you want, but if you end up forgetting this at the restaurant or it somehow ends up in the trash after a artichoke turning project, you don't have to stress about it because you can pick up a new one for about eight bucks. Next up in size here, I would bring the Ninox G-Type Petty. This is the 150 millimeter version and this is actually the first Ninox purchase I ever made. The handle is simple, black, but I love the steel. It's super hard. It gets crazy sharp and lasts forever. Plus the thin profile makes sure you feel like a badass when you're doing all those little tiny knife work projects that you're most likely to do when you go out for a stage. I think about that a lot when I'm packing for a stage. I've done enough of them to where I know more or less the tasks that I'll be charged with doing, especially because I usually research the restaurant quite a bit before I go. I do not pack my fish butchery knives or a slicer because what are the chances that you're gonna be carving meat on a stage? Slim to none, right? Expect to do a lot of prep, so prepare for that. Also, try to think about kitchen staples. So whisks and scales and big tools, anything that they are most likely to have already in house, they will not ask you to do a item of prep that they aren't already prepared to do themselves. So just think about the tiny essentials that you don't wanna be annoying and ask for. Big dog up next, this is the Misono UX10 Gyotu. This is a 240 millimeter beauty. I talked about this a lot in my why I won't buy a new knife video. But I love this knife for stages because I can get a nice sharp edge on it. It's gonna last for a long time. But more than that, the blade length of this makes butternut squash or cabbage a breeze because 
the blade the blade's just big enough to handle it. Chopping parsley or hashing shallots or even chopping chives. I did those three projects for about a year at the French Laundry, and this is the knife that I used for it, so I really, really recommend this knife a lot. Now, what's the point of showing up to a stage with three knives if they're all dull? Of course, show up to a stage with sharp knives. If you can't do it yourself, make sure you get it done by someone else. You should be prepared for a cook or a sous chef to come up and cut something with your knife and literally make a judgment on you as a cook based on that. It's been done before, I've seen it. I always impress because I keep my knives sharp AF, but that's just a little pro tip for you. All that being said, I also keep one of these with me. This is the Mac Honing Rod Steel, I guess whatever you want to call it. This one is made out of ceramic. It is a step up from their white ceramic version. That one's 1200 grit. This one's about 2000 grit. Plus it's got the rubber stopper on the top, a little bit of a beefier handle, and a core that makes it less brittle. It's worth the price upgrade in my opinion, and back to what I said about expecting to do a lot of prep. If you show up with super sharp knives and they ask you to shift an odd 20 pounds of leeks, six pounds in, your knife is gonna feel a little bit dull. They don't have any shame about honing your knife during a stage. If you start off with a sharp knife, hone on this bad boy, you'll just be back in business. Staying in the blade department, I like to carry around one of these bad boys. This is a little X-Acto knife with a retractable blade. Having one of these in your pocket just makes it so that if you need something sharp, you don't have to go over to your cutting board or open up your knife roll. It only requires one hand to open and close, plus if it gets dull, you just snap off the individual blades and you're good to go. Scissors, these are crazy important, and if you've got a sharp pair, the cook that you get paired up with will love you for making their prep look good. I picked up this pair in Japan, but any pair that's uniquely yours and well-made is great. I like these specifically because the blades are thick enough, so I'm just as comfortable cutting through crab shells as I am snipping herbs. Peeler! I bet you, you will use one of these on your stage. Back in the day when I was staging in New York, when you'd send them an email and they'd respond to you, they'd tell you you needed to bring chef knife, paring knife, peeler. This is a Kuhn Rikon peeler. These are the best in my opinion, as far as like, life and performance to price. They're super affordable. They come in like 6,000 colors. Just get a pink one and you'll know it's yours. If you want, you can also Sharpie your initials to the underside of the peeler where it's less likely to like get washed. Pens, I carry a Sharpie around. It's nice to have two of these because there is no easier and cheaper way to make a friend in the restaurant industry than giving them a Sharpie, weird industry stuff. I use the industrial style ones that are apparently super permanent. I don't really know what that means, but I like it because it has red text on the barrel of the pen, also so you can make sure that it's yours. For the pen itself, the Pilot G2 works just fine. I just like to have one with a retractable uh, element itself to make sure that you have a hand free for our next piece, which is this guy, a tiny notebook you can keep in your pocket. You can use whatever one you want. Back at WD-50, I staged there for about a week. Wiley Dufresne found these guys from a company called Right in the Rain, and he bought them for all of his cooks. They are more or less made for outdoor use, but the great thing about these is that they have waterproof paper. You can get a waterproof pen if you like. The G2 should work just fine for you. I like using this because if a puree or a stock or an oil spills on any of your pages, anything that you wrote is not lost. But the reason that you need a notebook regardless in your stage setup is because you will be writing a list. You will be asked to mise out a recipe. Having one of these will make sure that not only are you more confident about what you were just told, but just the act of being seen writing something down makes a great impression on whoever is either preparing to hire you or whoever you're working with. Bench scraper, this one is from Matt Fur. It's got a nice sharp edge to gather up chopped herbs. Plus it's stiff enough to pass something through the temi if you're gonna be doing any work like that. I just like it to keep it around and make sure cleaning up is super fast. They're a little bit more expensive than your run of the mill bench scraper, but it's worth it. Rapid fire hand tool time. Spoons, I love spoons if you saw in my little toolbox showcase there. I will not bring any of my nice spoons on a stage because they will go missing. I keep a couple of these guys around. These are from Grey Kunz. They're pretty affordable. I keep one standard one and one perforated one just in case. Boom, palette knife. As far as design and ergonomics go, this one by Town Cutler in San Francisco is the best one that I've found. They're super expensive, but they're all handmade and they've got a bunch of dope colors for the handle that you can choose from. Plus Galen makes really great stuff, so I'm all about supporting him in any way that I can. Small silicone spatula. This one's from a company called Get It Right, G-I-R. I like this one a lot because it's one cohesive piece. There's no silicone tip that 
has the potential of popping off. I clipped the top of mine in a blender situation once, so I just went and trimmed around it. I think it's time to Amazon a red one to my place, am I right? Oyster knife, another Victorinox piece. Uh, the tip of this one also snapped off while I was opening a gigantic Norwegian monster oyster, but I just filed it down to a new tip and it's been treating me great ever since then. But this is one of those pieces that I'm not really sure there's a good substitution for, and if they have you doing any sort of shellfish related projects, I just prefer to have this around. Tweezers! This is also one of those pieces that you kind of have to gauge depending on the restaurant that you're going to. If it's a place where you see yourself maybe helping out a little bit with plating, it's very intricate, it's a little bit more fine dining style, I prefer these. These are from JB Prince. They are just a little offset pair of tweezers. Bring a cheap pair. Uh, I have some really nice ones that are like a gold color that I prefer to plate with normally, but for a stage, just bring a cheap disposable pair like these. So this is what the knife roll looks like all stashed up. Like I mentioned earlier, I will usually stash it in like a messenger style bag, just so that I don't have to stress about any handles or anything like that. And I'll load a couple of other essentials up into this bag. So I will bring a change of clothes usually. I'm working with like a pair of stretchy style uh, trousers or jeans, depending on which kind of restaurant uh, you're going to. A couple of business cards, just in case. A protein bar, I prefer these by Cliff Bar. These are builder bars, they have like 20 grams of protein in there. Uh, this is just in case you miss staff meal uh, and you're standing for nine, 10, 11, 12. Don't pass out, because that's a really easy way to not get the job. Nalgene bottle, uh, I prefer these because I can drop it off the counter 16 times and it's not gonna break. And of course, your kitchen shoes of choice. Just like that, we're ready to go. So I think it's important to note that you definitely don't have to have any of these things, but they definitely make my life easier, make sure I can get the job done. But I'm confident that the things that will actually get you the job don't fit in that knife roll. Things like organization, willingness to take direction and follow instructions, communication with other people, attitude, etc. all of that stuff, way more important than what's in that knife roll. So if you have all of those things and you're confident in yourself and you wanna up your game a little bit, this video's for you. And don't get me wrong, some of the things I covered are a huge pain in my ass. That Ninox Petty Knife takes twice as long to sharpen as any of my other knives because the steel is just harder but it holds the edge a lot longer. It's ergonomically more comfortable for me to use, and that in and of itself makes me a more efficient cook. And in my opinion, those things separate us from other cooks. If I see someone with a well-used, sharp, high-quality knife, I'm like, yep, you know what's up, as opposed to that other stage that either just got a new toy or is hacking through a bunch of chives on the cutting board next to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are struggling with any of those aspects of non-gear related stuff that I mentioned, I implore you to do a little bit more self-reflection and invest your time and your money on things that will improve that aspect of your cooking game, and that will be way more likely to get you the job than any of the things that I talked about in this video. If you have any questions for me about how how to send that first email to a restaurant or get in the right mindset for a stage. Go ahead and leave those questions down in the description. I would love to get in a conversation with you. My point being here is don't be discouraged if you can't afford to buy a new knife or a waterproof notebook. You don't need those things. Consider this your view into my head and why I use what I use. I've added links to all of the things that we talked about as well as some bonus pieces in my what's in my knife roll kit on kit.com. If you don't know, kit is a great site to make beautiful sets of the gear that you use to do what you do. So definitely check mine out. The link's in the description. Go ahead and make one for yourself if you're interested. It's pretty fun. I'm not being paid to say it. I just really like kit as a platform. Go ahead and tweezer stab that thumbs up button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We are seriously just scratching the surface on gear related stuff. Wait until you see what I use when I actually have the job. I'm Justin Kana. Have a good one. Thank you.